Here's a run through of my 10 favourite and most used expressions in just 10 short minutes. There are some really fun ones here, so stick around, I promise you won't regret it. I almost didn't include the wiggle expression because, let's face it, if you've heard of expressions, you've probably used the wiggle expression. But this is the wiggle expression with a twist. So here's how to add a wiggle expression and have the ability to keyframe its properties. Let's add a wiggle expression to this fish's rotation. But let's say we no longer want Fred here to move and we want the wiggle to slow down or even stop completely. Here's how we can do that. We add two sliders to the layer, call one X and the other Y. Go to our rotation or the property we want the wiggle on, or click the stopwatch to open our expression box. And we want to type X equals and then pick whip to our X slider. Semicolon on the end. Then Y equals and pick whip to our Y slider. Semicolon on the end again. Now we can do our standard wiggle expression, but rather than adding our two values directly into the expression, we add in our x and y. So it's x, comma, y. Now we can enter the wiggle values into our sliders. And more importantly, we now have the ability to keyframe our sliders and therefore our wiggle. The time expression is probably the one I use most days, if not every day. It's an easy way of creating some continuous movement for the duration of our animation. If I were to simply type in time, then our rotation would increase by one degree every second. If we then typed in asterisk or times, followed by a number, then the speed would increase. As you might have noticed, this expression does default our property values to zero, so we can add value plus at the start of our expression to include any value we want to add to its starting position. I use this expression all the time, whether it be to keep something continually rotating or moving position, or even in the random seed property to generate continuous movement in textures and other elements. Loop out is a great way to repeat or loop keyframes without having to copy and paste them along your timeline. And there are a few different and fun things to play with as well. Firstly, we have two keyframes moving from left to right. If we alt click on the stopwatch of our keyframes property to bring up the expression box, and all we need to do is type in loop out with a capital O, open bracket, close bracket. Now, if we play this through, you will see that rather than stopping at our final keyframe, it jumps back to the start and loops through again and again for the duration of our timeline. Now, if we were to go back to our expression and type in ping pong, inside the brackets, including the quotation marks, as you can see here. Now you will notice that rather than jump back to the first keyframe, it ping pongs back and forth between them. And the coolest thing is, if we were to change ping pong to offset, this will still loop our keyframes, but from their final position. Useful for this bouncing ball animation and all from just one set of keyframes. If we added some text and then added the effect slider to our layer, pick whipping our source text to that slider, we can then use that slider to control our text. If we keyframe this at zero, go to the end of our timeline and keyframe it as a high number, say 100, then we should have a nice animated timer from zero to 100. But if I was to scroll through our timeline, it assumes I'm some kind of mathematician that needs to know pi to the nearest 10 decimal places, but unless you're Alan Turing, you're likely to want this to be a nice round number, and that's where this expression comes in. To do this, we add the expression math.round to the start of our existing expression, with our slider expression inside these brackets. And this will ensure our numbers are nice and round. You can add any symbol you like inside quotation marks, followed by a plus at the start or end of our expression. Do you remember that bouncing ball from our loop out expression? That wasn't too bad, but a realistic and natural bounce would lose height with every bounce before coming to a rest. If only there was an expression for that so I didn't have to keyframe every damn position. Luckily, there is. Now, this one is a bit of a longy, so rather than write it from scratch, all we're going to do is copy and paste it into our chosen property. I will post a link to the expression in the comments so you can grab this same expression from there, as well as any other expression used in this tutorial. 
So here we have a ball dropping from the sky and hitting the floor. Not much to it. But if we were to alt click and paste in the bounce expression, instant animation success. And we can adjust the top three lines of the expression to alter the elasticity, gravity and number of bounces. Inertia is very similar to the bounce expression, but rather than hitting an object and bouncing, it overshoots and oscillates. Imagine a cartoon character running and coming to a sudden stop. Again, all we need is two keyframes for this to work, and we then just copy and paste in our ready-made expression. Again, link in the comments. This is one of my favorite expressions to play with, so have fun. If you have one layer with keyframes, using this expression you can duplicate that layer and that duplicated layer's keyframes will be delayed. Essentially, you can create a wave of animation with little to no effort. This expression relies on your layers being named correctly, so any errors in your expression, go back and check your layer names before anything else. As always, we begin with our animated layer. I have a circle with the scale keyframed as so. Now we need to name this layer one. The specific expression you will need depends on what you're animating, so make sure you grab the correct one. I'm going to delay the scale of this circle that I've already keyframed, so I copy the expression, alt click on the stopwatch next to scale and paste in the expression. Before anything else, we need to choose how many frames we want to delay by. I'm going to stick with just five frames. Now, if we duplicate this layer, and just move its position so it's not on top of the original. And as the keyframes are identical, but delayed by five frames, we can duplicate again and again until we have this nice wave. After lovingly putting together a design with a number of different layers, we decide to add a camera with some movement. But in order to get parallax in between the layers, we need to spread them out in 3D space. All well and good, but when I move a layer backwards, just like in real life, it gets smaller. But we don't want this, as it was designed the size we wanted it to remain. So we have to move it backwards and then scale it back up to match its original size, forgetting how big it started and getting into a whole frustrating thing, and for every single layer. Here's the solution, and all it is is this expression and we copy and paste this into the scale property of our 3D layer, or 3D layers, depends on how many we have. We do need to make sure we have a camera called camera one, or change the name of the camera in the first line to match your existing camera. Now, when we move our layer backwards or forwards in 3D space, its scale remains the same. Here we have two layers with keyframes. And if we wanted our bat to hit the ball multiple times, we would need to copy and paste these keyframes multiple times. If we wanted to then change the timings or speed, we would have a lot of faffing to do. However, all we actually need is one set of keyframes and an expression. Let's delete all these keyframes, leaving just the first set. And if I now open the expression box and paste in the expression, nothing will happen. But this is because these keyframes are reliant on there being a layer marker to trigger them, which we don't have. So I can right click on our layer, go to markers and add marker. Then scroll along in the timeline and add another and another and so on. Since in this example, we have two layers with their own sets of keyframes. I also need to paste the expression into our second layer. But this time we need to adjust the first line of our expression. And all we do is delete this layer and then pick whip to our other layer with the markers on. Now, whenever our playhead hits these markers, those keyframes will be triggered. We can go back and change our keyframes, add or remove layer markers, and just have fun. This one's more of a super handy and efficient way of building a project, where you know you might want to change effects on multiple layers later down the line, without having to go through every single layer and changing the properties on each and every one individually. So what we do is add an adjustment layer, or a solid, it doesn't really matter, and we turn it off. We then add the drop shadow effect, or whichever effect you need, to this layer, and then, with it selected, go to Edit, copy with relative property links. We can now select every layer we want this effect on and paste. 
What this has essentially done is add the same effect but with an expression on each property linked to that main controlling effect. Now when we go back to our adjustment layer and alter the properties, the properties on each layer we pasted it on are also affected. Magic.